feature Model B Resistance, African-American portraits from the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. It's certainly an unusual title for a photography exhibition. The title itself comes from uh, words of Henry Garnett, an abolitionist in 1843, who is speaking to a, a convention in Buffalo of free people of color. So in 1843, uh, the, the notion has a very sort of clear and specific meaning. It's a resistance against slavery. And then as we move forward in the exhibition, we see that resistance can be interpreted in many different ways. There are 100 photographs in this show, and we'll see resistance in the terms of, uh, or in the form of abolitionists and civil rights leaders. We see resistance um, in the artistry of performers and, and artists, and even a certain type of resistance that athletes have provided during the course of their careers. Well, the earliest photograph in the exhibition is from 1856, and that is a, a really important photograph, a unique, one-of-a-kind ambrotype of Frederick Douglass. And I think this picture is really interesting to look at when we consider um, art, the art of Africa, and how that compares with, with the Western traditions of photography. I think many people, if you think of what African art is, one of the first things you'll think of is the mask. And besides the religious or ceremonial functions that the mask in various African cultures provides, one of the things that a mask does, of course, is to hide individual identity. Interesting that photography or a photograph, especially a portrait photograph, is precisely the opposite. So when we look at, at this photograph of Frederick Douglass, I think one of the striking things is just how Western, if you will, he appears. He's wearing his Western clothing. And in fact, during his time, he was such a wonderful orator that people even doubted his claims of being a slave earlier in his life. And in a lot of the photographs, especially the early 19th century photographs, or the mid to late 19th century photographs, uh, image is important. So what we're seeing is images of African Americans, images of people of African descent, which defy the stereotype, where people thought, oh, all people of African descent looked a certain way, or people had this sort of visual expectation that everyone was just a slave. Here we see people who are presenting themselves in a, in a much different fashion. Now. That's a little bit different than another early photograph in the exhibition, and this one is of a slave called Gordon. It's a famous picture, which was reproduced thousands and thousands of times. Gordon was a slave, and what we see at, on his back, it's, we can't turn away in, in a way, is, is all the horrible scarring from the whippings that he received. So now this picture, unlike the Douglas, this is, in a way, more conventional in that it is sort of a slave picture. But here, image is important because this image was reproduced thousands and thousands of times, and it was disseminated in, I think, the years 1863. And the image was actually used to draw financial support for uh, the Civil War, for the Union Army in the Civil War. Um, interestingly, uh, 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 photography is used in another um, way in order to, to back a cause, to, to bring some money to a cause. When we look at this image of Sojourner Truth, and she was a slave um, originally, and she changes her name in part to talk about or to have a, she's a, a living, breathing advertisement for her causes of, of racial justice and also of um, equality of the sexes. And underneath this picture, there's one of her famous slogans that she sells the shadow to support the substance. And she actually makes reproductions, thousands of reproductions of this photograph of herself as a way of supporting her, her efforts. 
So I think that's a, a, a really interesting and important image as well. Another picture in, in the first room of the exhibition is of Blind Tom. Blind Tom was a, uh, a piano prodigy, probably autistic. He, he was born blind and he didn't, I don't know if he was, um, he didn't have tremendous language skills, but boy, could he play the piano. And he played these concerts throughout the South. Interestingly, though, he, his manager was a, uh, a white person. And um, ironically, and perhaps sadly, during the Civil War, um, Blind Tom was used by his manager to play concerts to benefit the Confederacy. So what does it mean, though, to, to think of resistance in this case in Blind Tom? I think, you know, you can almost see it in his face. There's sort of a, a stoic expression on his face. Um, I think in this case, his resistance is his own sense of his own individual artistry. And so perhaps he couldn't control the circumstances in which he was playing, but in terms of the beauty that he was able to create through his hands, through his music, um, his form of resistance was, was, was still defying this stereotype. Here is a, a person of African descent with these extraordinary artistic gifts. As we move forward in the exhibition into the 20th century, I think you'll notice that the style of photography changes. In the 19th century room, you see a lot of the photographs are in standardized formats, like the ambrotype, which was in that uh, sort of, uh, well, a beautiful golden case, but it's called the six plate, it was a standard size. We also see those carte de visites, and then we see the cabinet cards like Sojourner Truth. And these were made uh, in part to have uh, the ability to reproduce them real easily. And then people would have albums where you could just slide these cards into your album. When we move into the 20th century, you see this change where the photographs aren't just about someone. I think you see an assertion of the, the artist behind the camera as well. So they are photographs of someone famous, but they're also in some cases by someone famous. For example, the photograph of Booker T. Washington in the show is by Arthur Badu. And Badu is one of the great photographers, great African-American photographers of the 20th century. In fact, his, his career uh, it almost covers the first, well, I think he's active from about the turn of the century all the way into the 1960s. He's also one of the great photographers of New Orleans. And I think many people, if they go and look at some of their formal pictures, especially people of African uh, descent or African Americans here in New Orleans, don't be surprised if you don't find Badu's signature under their picture. Um, Badu is also sometimes referred to as New Orleans equivalent of of uh, James Vandrezy. James Vandrezy, and we have two or three of his photographs in the show, including one of uh, Father Divine. James Vandrezy is known sort of as the, the great photographer of the Harlem Renaissance. And of course, this Harlem Renaissance refers to this wonderful period in, in our nation's history, specifically in Harlem, when you have this, this great conglomeration, if you will, of African artists, writers, poets, musicians, and thinkers who create a, a wonderful cultural environment uh, in Harlem. And we have a photograph by Langston Hughes, the great poet of the Harlem Renaissance by famed photographer Edwin Weston. And we also have a photograph of Cab Calloway, who was active in Harlem at the time with his, with his music. So the show just builds into the 20th century in this fashion.
There's some great athletes presented in the show. Um, Jesse Owens, of course, a famous, the, the famous uh, track athlete. Here's a case where I think it is important not only to talk about Jesse Owens' amazing accomplishments in the Olympics of 1936, but we really do have to point out who took this picture. This photograph of Owens is by Lenny Reisenstahl, who is the Nazi propagandist. She's famous for her films called Triumph of the Will. And her message was supposed to be all about the Aryan super race. But in his form of resistance, Jesse Owens comes and, and kicks some Aryan butt, if you know what I mean. Uh, there's another great photograph of a great athlete in the show. And this is of Willie Mays. And the, the thing that I think is so wonderful about the picture, here he is in batting practice. And it looks like the batting practice pitcher threw one a little bit high and inside. And so this isn't the famous picture of, Lou, of Willie Mays catching that fo the, uh, the long fly ball over his shoulders. But this is just a picture of Willie Mays in batting practice. But you can just see his balletic grace just in avoiding, in avoiding this, this pitch, the way his body sort of contorts in this beautiful fashion. Near the time that this photograph was made, we also have one of Miss Rosa Parks. Interesting, too, because this photograph was taken very near the time of her resistance. And of course, her resistance was refusing to give her seat up on that bus. That's an interesting picture, too, because I think so many of the images that we see of Rosa Parks were done later on in her life, and maybe we get this this misperception that she was a, a frail little old lady who decided she wasn't going to give up her seat. But here we see Rosa Parks at the time, uh, a, a brave woman full of resistance, full of vigor. of the 20th century, of course, uh, the civil rights movement gained strength, in part because of the efforts of important civil rights leaders. There's two photographs of Martin Luther King in the exhibition, and of course, there's thousands and thousands of pictures. But here, the decision was to present two photographs of Martin Luther King with his family. Once, when he's alive, but in a second picture in the show, as he's lying in state, laying in his coffin. So I think that's a really strong and interesting juxtaposition. We also have a, a photograph of Malcolm X. Again, one that isn't sort of a stereotypical picture of Malcolm X. I think you know, we imagine him on a dais with his hands in the air screaming or making some important point about the racial injustice that he saw. But here he is just on the street doing sort of the groundwork, the grassroots work of spreading his message. Um, there's other, other civil rights leaders in, in, in sort of a different fashion. There's a great photograph of Muhammad Ali. Now his resistance, of course, came in, in many ways. He's, he's, he resisted, he resisted a couple of right hooks in, in the ring, but he also resisted, for example, um, going to Vietnam. And this is a photograph by Gordon Parks, who is one of the great photographers of the 20th century, and also sometimes referred to as the Jackie Robinson of photography. There's a portrait of Gordon in the show as well. And Gordon is the first African-American uh, photographer to be hired by Life magazine. And his career spans, oh, I guess it would be almost 40 or 50 years. He just passed away five or six years ago. And besides his work as a photographer, he was also uh, a writer and a filmmaker. In 1968, I think, he makes a famous movie called Shaft, 
which uh, of course was a great success. <laughs> And as we sort of near, well, the end of the show, some of the faces, I think, become um, even more familiar. Um, someone like Richard Pryor, for example, whose form of resistance was, again, um, not accepting the status quo, but in Richard Pryor's case, of course, doing it in a comedic fashion. And we also have uh, photographs in the exhibition of two local New Orleanians, two of our important cultural figures here, two of the Marsalis' brothers, both Branford and Winton. And um, they are not only uh, cultural leaders, uh, their resistance comes not only in the form of, of music, but they have been uh, tireless ambassadors for New Orleans. So it's about resistance, and I think many of these ideas um, are, are still so relevant and so important. Um, in my commentary here, I, you know, I've borrowed some of the words from the curators who put this show together. I think it's important, too, to consider even the form in which you will see the show. Maybe this show here in the museum is, is in its way a form of resistance as well, because across the hall there's another great exhibition, and this is on Napoleon. But I think it's important that people, and certainly uh, children, can come to the museum and they can see a different type of history. History isn't just Napoleon. Um, history also looks like them, too. So I think that is a, sort of an important final, final point to be made, that resistance continues. And as long as we all um, don't accept injustice and don't accept uh, the status quo, that uh, we can all move forward together. Okay.